Hello everyone and welcome to the Captain's Video Vlog. We are uh, Monday, yeah, Monday, um, August the 22nd, 2016. Actually, you know, it's Tuesday morning. It's like 1.20, 1.30 in the morning. Uh, so, let's talk about SummerSlam. I actually stayed awake late enough for late. Uh, I don't know how I should react to 1 p.m. being late. Um, but it is. For the for yesterday's video vlog to be completely uploaded, no error. That was wonderful. <sighs> um, however, I am uh, I I think uh, putting my my fan on so so so, so hard. I would guess um, was a bad idea because uh, I was feeling fucking cold when I woke up, uh, and even before going to sleep. I mean, it's kind of a good good feeling going to sleep and you know you're just wrapped in your blanket um, and oh boy oh <laughs> every everything outside is so cold I need a pack of, of tissues um, anyway so SummerSlam I I finally got to watch the two hour long uh, pre-show which had three matches um, so the first match was you know kind of a repeat of what was on Smackdown um, wasn't bad the 12 men match um, the, the Usos picked up the win and um, let's just say that American Alpha weren't too happy with the way Jimmy or Jay got the pin because blind tag um, blind tagged themselves into the match when um, when uh, uh, Gable and, and Jordan were setting up for the Grand Amplitude not not a good thing to do. Um, anyway, uh, second match was Sami Zayn and Neville uh, teaming up against the apparently on their way to leave Dudley Boys. Um, very very good action. Very good tag team um, performance from uh, Zayn and Neville who picked up the win. Uh, I liked the fact that Sami just went out of his way to make things easier for Neville, you know, even though it didn't always work. Uh, but yeah, uh, hell of a kick and the the red arrow and uh, yeah, apparently, you know, uh, it's it's kind of sad to think that um, the Dudleys are on the, their way out of the company, but they have a wrestling school, so um, yeah. Um, Good, you know, good luck to them. Um, they are a, a team that likely won't be forgotten for many years, uh, and uh, I hope for you know the better reasons like t the Chelsea matches, rather than the bad reasons like br 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 the, the, the Reverend Devon on SmackDown in two thousand and two, um, and then the first match of the series of seven between uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, it's going to be a very good series because both are very good, you know, technicians. Uh, Sheamus is a bit on the boring side, but uh, yeah, he has th th makes for good matches. Sheamus has won. I think it's a good thing because Cesaro should be trailing, you know, um, in a heel versus face. It's always good to have the face going after the the heel and not having the heel. You know, being at the, at a dis disadvantage from the get go. Um, so yeah, I, I also watched the first hour of the show, uh, which was which started with. Uh, <laughs> I, I I'm not really laughing because despite the great promo by Enzo, you know, saying that yeah, New York, it's great and everything, best city, best city in the world, and uh, Cass just you know, Colin Cassidy just reminding us just how. The lungs of this man. Uh, <laughs> uh, he got shut down almost immediately after by Corey Graves on commentary, who said, "Yeah, uh, uh, Enzo Amore went uh, through every New York stereotype, and yet he's from New Jersey." And I was like, "Oh boy, that's great." Um, anyway, uh, Jericho, Jerry Ko won. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Um, 
I think it's a good thing because it would have been kind of shitty. You you're building up a team on their ability to have each other's backs. You know, they after the match they say, "I love you, man. I love you too, man." And that was just so amazing. And even Brooklyn, despite saying that Jericho are soft, they cannot bring themselves to hate. Uh, Kevin Owens and I think that's just great you know Kevin Owens is incredibly entertaining like what he did uh, he he mocked Enzo and Cass <laughs> uh, doing the the strut that Enzo does when he's waiting uh, on on the apron um, and then he went at Cass and was like yeah, fight me bro um, in that very Old old school poster like uh, boxer like posture. Uh, it was very fun. Uh, then there was the match for the women's championship. Uh, Sasha took a nasty nasty bump early on, and people will say, "Oh, Sasha oh, never looks safe." Um, Charlotte is to blame. Like, what the fuck were you trying to do, Charlotte? Um, were you trying to drop her back on your knee? Because you went way too fast. Um, Charlotte won uh, because uh, the, there was some fear about that that Sasha was going to be suspended too because okay, but no, she's just injured, um, so she's taking some time, time off to, to you know, um, recover. Um, I, and at the end of the day, it's kind of weird that you know. I mean, it makes sense that the the title changes, but. Uh, f uh, why did it have to go so fast? Uh, I mean, it's good to have a a good a feel good moment by giving Sasha the title, you know. But uh, nah, nah, nah. Uh, anyway, uh, match for the Intercontinental Championship. Pretty fast match between Apollo Cruz and uh, the Miz. The Miz, who uh, wow. Um, I just want to say one thing about the Miz. He either, either. He, he should either keep the title long enough to be the longest reigning, you know, all time, of all time, uh, intercontinental champion, or he should drop it just like one week, or even, fuck, if, the, if there's a pay-per-view, uh, the day sh just sh days short of being, becoming the longest ever, um, the longest of the uh, intercontinental champion. Um, he won pretty easily, like I think it was the shortest match, even counting the pre-show of the evening, it went to like 5 minutes or something. <sighs> oh, that was very short. Um, but yeah, um, gave, us, gave us a good look at, at uh, Apollo Cruz's um, in-ring abilities though. Uh, it's a good thing that he, he is on the main card, ev you know, even with a short match rather than on the pre-show where not everyone who watches the show will be watching uh, so yeah um, then there was uh, what I think was the match of the night and it's kind of a shame that he it happened so early but then again um, if you count the pre-show it was pretty much smack dab in the middle of the of SummerSlam John Cena versus AJ Styles AJ Styles won he it took him two Styles crushes and couple calf crushes another you know, it is phenomenal forearms, but he kicked out of several attitude adjustments, and uh, uh, John Cena pretty much threw everything he had at at AJ Styles. And when AJ Styles kept on kicking out, you know, there was just this moment where Cena was like, for a good thirty seconds, sitting on a turnbuckle, like, "What the fuck, man!" And it just was so great. He told an amazing story. Um, something that you know will probably not be replicated until I don't know another passing of, of the torch or something like that but uh, yeah this is just great stuff amazing match like potential match of the year contender I'm not even kidding you have to watch that shit um, then came you know a strange ordering in the matches because after that and it's just so strange that it happened so early it was the the match for the WWE World Championship between Dean Ambrose and Dolph Ziggler. 
Dolph didn't even had a single false finish. Uh, so what the fuck? Dean Ambrose went for the dirty deeds. One time he was cocky as fuck. It looked like he was being too cocky. I thought that it was Dolph's time, but I guess not. <laughs> um, one dirty deeds, and it was done for Dolph. It just feels so bad, you know. They have been building up Dolph Ziggler as this kind of actual threat to Dean's title, and yet it is just that that feels all bad because of the in good old Dolph Ziggler fashion. <laughs> um, I thought that he was going to be suspended, but mm, I guess not. Uh, we'll see who, if he's coming back at uh, at Dean on SmackDown or if. Dean is going to have to find another challenger. We'll see. Um, then Kane uh, did it Kane immediately after. I think the, the WWE Universal Championship came right after that and the belt stole the spotlight because it's fucking ugly. You know, like um, it, it represents a brand that doesn't know what they're, the fuck they're doing with their wrestlers. Uh, with shady booking. Um, shoddy booking actually, and just what uh, it was a great match between Finn Balor and uh, and Seth Rollins. Seth even got out uh, his God's last last gift was amazing. Finn won. He is the inaugural uh, Universal Champion, but he had to drop the belt because he has a shoulder injury. Why can't we have nice things? I guess that it's you know the kind of thing that the things that happen when you are holding a belt with the strap that just looks like it's done out of baby bell wax. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go go search baby bell wax. You know baby bell cheese. You will probably understand way better after that. Uh, it just you know there is one template for all the belts. I mean it's the same template for the WWE World Championship, WWE Universal Championship, WWE Women's Championship. I swear to God, it's, it's, if it's going to be the same for the Tag Team Championship and the Women's Championships on SmackDown, I will be extremely pissed because yeah, uh, you can you know it stole, it stole the spotlight. Yeah, 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 smartphones turn dumb. Yeah, just shut up. It represents nothing at this point. Uh, it represents the new girl champion having to drop the belt after not even holding it for a whole day. That's what it represents. Um, so yeah, uh, I just I I'm so bummed for for Finn because he deserved it, you know. Um, anyway, then came the three on three women's match. Uh, Eva Marie got introduced, but she said the, the big voice said no, she's actually not there because of hostile WWE fans. So she will be replaced by Nikki Bella, and Nikki Bella made her team win because obviously. And there was the WWE 24 thing when they said, yeah, you know Nikki Bella, the Bella Twins, and Stephanie McMahon, they are big helpers in the women's revolution. No, 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 no. Let's just tell me, <laughs> let's just tell me tell you one thing: the Bella Twins are probably the gatekeepers of the old era in women's wrestling they are they, they just they it evolved so much when they were not there um i i don't understand why the the crowd shit shoot on her so much um anyway uh, there was supposed to be a match between uh, Rusev and and Roman Reigns but Roman Reigns decided to be a huge asshole and just beat the shit out of Rusev and then when you know after he heard that the match had been called off because uh, Rusev was too injured what did our good old American hero you know not the good guy not the good bad guy that's the guy Roman Reigns did he fucking speared him like Jesus Christ man fuck off <laughs> I know as I've said time and time again I want to see a more brutal more intense Roman Reigns but there he is just being an asshole and he's certainly not turning heel because he's just it's just the way the WWE baby faces are, are booked by being huge cuds um, uh, anyway were there any other matches uh, besides the main event so the main event this was a pretty strange main event between Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton he Lesnar just he opened Randy Orton and he bled pretty heavily and it ended in a TKO and Jericho was pissed about that apparently 
and he got pretty physically in the face of Brock Lesnar after the match. Oh, that was that was something. To <laughs> it must have been crazy to see. So yeah, um, Brock Lesnar won. He made he did a, gave an, F, an F5 to Shane McMahon because of, uh, of course it was a shit show. It was it wasn't bad. It wasn't the greatest thing ever. But it, I mean it wasn't bad. I would give it maybe up to 12 out of 20 because all in all it, it was still pretty enjoyable at point at some points. Just raw fix your booking. God damn it. Uh, I'm gonna sit in front of your show for three hours in 15 minutes. Just do something. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Oh yeah, Marseille. There was an announcement that oh yeah, it's Fight Me Soul. It's going to be announced officially, and Marcel Bielsa is coming back. And then the then I was said like no, 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 no. I will announce it. The city will know it. The employees will know it. Just the, the, the fuck off. <laughs> what an emotional roller coaster. Goodbye.